Aloha, and welcome back to Physical Therapy for a Better Life. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. Today, I want everyone to know that we are manifesting our reality all day long, every day, and we don't even know it. You think of your friend and you miss your friend and two days later, they call you. You're thinking of something else and all of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I ran into that person. We're manifesting by our thoughts and our intentions all day long. And today, I would like to welcome Letitia Tish Sharp, wellness practitioner and licensed massage therapist, to come on and show us how to manifest everything we want, every one of our desires. Welcome, Tish. Oh, good morning, Christine. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. I uh, manifested that as we were talking about earlier because <laughs> I feel like I have been on this journey of working on my thoughts and my intentions and my inner voice and thinking about all these things I want to accomplish, including this show. Having this show is definitely one of my desires and here it is and making it the best for every human being is also one of my desires. And so Tell me, what, is, what does it mean to manifest? How do we set that intention or that desire? How do we get what we want? Okay, so first of all, you brought up two amazing points already from the get-go. And one is consciousness and unconsciousness. Okay, so thoughts become things whether you're accidentally thinking about something or whether you are actually thinking about something with purpose, right? So if you think about something with purpose, you're setting the energy for that thought, that thing, that event, that desire, and the universe responds back to you, right? So that's how it all works. In fact, just this morning, Okay, so I've got a few stories that happened just this morning, which is the way it always happens. But I have a good friend who, um, she just lost her father, but he lived a good long life. And she had asked me to help her with finding a boat to be able to swim his, or take his ashes out on his birthday. So I asked around and I got the information and then it all happened, but she didn't end up going out on the boat. And the person who got the boat for me asked me this morning, she said, how did that go? Did, I mean, I wanted to circle back. Is everything okay with her? I'm like, oh, it's beautiful. It was her and her family. They paddled out. It was a gorgeous morning. It was at sunrise on his birthday. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's great. I'm just so glad it worked out. She texted me right before the show and said, oh my gosh, I just ran into her at Kapiolani Park and told her, we were just talking about you this morning. I heard it was a beautiful ceremony. How, oh my gosh. And she's like, oh, it was. And she got all the details and it was so, okay. So when you say you think about something in a couple of days, it doesn't have to be a couple of days. It could be a couple hours. It wasn't even a couple hours. And boom, that connection happened. So that's how powerful we are. Wow. That's mm -hmm. profound. It gave me goosebumps everywhere because I have had that happen to me so many times in my life. And you feel so alive and so filled with like possibility when that happens because it's 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 literally mm -hmm. like you you pulled it into your life. Uh and, and, and when it happened, I don't even know, I'm just getting stammering over my words because <laughs> I'm thinking of all the times that it's happened to me. And that, that feeling, that feeling that I feel when it does happen is elation and, and completion. It's amazing. validation, right? Validation. Isn't that validation? It's validation that your consciousness and your awareness is meeting you. It's greeting you. It's coming back. Right. So yeah. What you're putting out there is returning. That's so true. What you just said, the you you get what you give or what you're putting out there, you will be receiving. And if you're putting out there all this positive intention and love and uh, giving and kindness, you will receive love and giving and kindness. And if you're putting out all this negativity and impossibility and I can't, what you end up receiving is that you're not getting what you want. You're not accomplishing the things that you know you can't because you know you can't do it. And so I, I think about that. Now, we talked a little bit about relationships. 
uh, yeah. just earlier. And I want to get right to that because I think it's one of the most amazing things in our life is relationships, love relationships, love relationships with our family, with our friends, with our partner. There's all these love relationships. Love makes the world go round, right? And so how do you manifest maybe a relationship or manifest more love in your relationship or how do we lasting relationship? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, that really in our um, conversations in the past, we've always come back to, it comes down to loving ourselves first, mm -hmm. right? And so wouldn't that make sense that if you're in a state of being in love with yourself, that you're going to attract somebody that's in love with that also? Yeah. And so what you want to do or what, if what you desire is a companion, then be a good companion. Be a good companion to yourself first. Do that first. Once you're a good companion to yourself, then you're going to have that energy rise up and meet you. The universe hears what we put out there, right? Mm -hmm. And so if what we're putting out there is, I'm a good companion. I love myself. I love being with myself. I love hanging out. I love sharing. I love being exposed. I love being vulnerable. I love being fun. I love crying and sharing emotions yeah. and experiences. Then what's going to happen is the universe is going to go, oh, this is, this is her. These are her desires. These are his desires. These are the things that they have in their life that they're practicing. Let's give them more, give them more. And then the other people and souls and beautiful little star beings in this world end up coming together. And we all end up just being, raising that up, leveling it up, leveling it up. I had a girlfriend this morning. Um, we're talking on the phone, a different girlfriend. And uh, been a busy morning. Yeah. <laughs> Only <laughs> and she um, is seeing someone and in the beginning she's like it's just so fun and I can feel my heart opening and I can feel like I'm able to bring more I feel like I'm ready and then over the last two to three months it hasn't taken long now I'm starting to hear her say well you know I know that this is what it isn't, you know, it's not a forever love. It's not a this, it's not a that. It's not, and I said, you know what? I just made an observation. You're talking more about what this isn't. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that's coming from a place of maybe vulnerability and um, being concerned about being hurt, right? right? Because we've all been hurt and it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all. However, I would bargain to say that every person who has been hurt was grateful for the love that they got from it. And if they haven't, then, you know, they'll get there. <laughs> but um, so she said, well, oh my gosh, what am I going to, how do I change that then? You're right. I didn't even realize I was doing that, but you're right. And I said, so come back to you, love. Come back to who you are. When you started seeing this person, it started out as, oh, all of these things that were ignited inside of you and all of these feelings that you're feeling with your heart and your expansion of yourself and everything. Go back to that. Because once we become who we want to see in our world, whether it's a lover, a friend, a child, a business associate, uh, a home, an accomplishment, a whatever. Once we become that energy, it will come back to us. It will greet us. It will rise up to meet us. So yeah, relations, I'd say that's the key. Become the person that you want in your life. That's amazing. And you know, you hear that in my life, you hear that in conversations over and over and over again, when you're talking with your guy friends, your girlfriends, your parents, your aunts and uncles, and that people that have been married for 50 and 60 years have all this wisdom. I love to ask them when I see them in the hospital, you know, I'm a physical therapist, I've been there. I'm like, what's the secret? And they all have different um, 
wisdoms like that that are so simple like you know be the person be the person you want in your relationship um mm -hmm. just absolutely accept the other person for who they are and enjoy being with that person i mean there's these things that are so profound and so simple you think about like what your friend was saying and what i've probably said in the past and all all of us say at some point in our lives you think about what is lacking versus what is um what is so completely abundant in your relationships and that abundance is what draw draws people together and what keeps the the newness so fresh and when you're focusing how much you enjoy spending time with each other how much they add to your life um your already awesome life and they're adding so much more and like you said the feeling yourself opening up and feeling yourself getting excited about sharing your life with other people and special someone and that's wonderful to keep focusing on that even when your mind shifts off into a what i'm lacking or oh i don't know maybe this person's relationship looks better but then you focus no but look at ours look what we have and and that and i think that that's key i guess huh <laughs> yeah i think a good tool for that is um and i can't remember where i heard it it was somewhere and is the um it's the jar exercise and so you take a piece of paper and every day you write and you can do this either with a relationship that you already have that you want to continue to manifest or create like a lifelong energy with that person that's content and satisfied and loving and kind and caring and happy and fun and joyful and all those things right so or you can also do it with um a person that hasn't shown up yet in your life and maybe just maybe you will find that person within yourself too right and then oh it's just gonna all come up so you take a piece of paper and you write the things that you would love to have in a relationship and you throw it in a jar um, or that you love about a relationship that you already have and you put it in a jar and you can try to do it every day, right? And and, 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 and that consistency, it's a, it's a lot yeah. sometimes because life happens mm -hmm. and be kind with yourself too, right? Because that's what we want from others is for them to be kind with us. So be kind with yourself, do it as you feel that you can work on being consistent uh if that's something that you want to have in your life and put it in a jar and then after a month three months a year or whatever go back and read them or gift them to your partner you know and watch how that ex explodes it's going to explode it's going to explode into more amazingness that's a, that's really profound. And I think that you said one thing too, that made me think of the, the writing. I know historically speaking, when we, you know, if you were going to do new year's goals and when you write down what you want, they say it's like 80% more likely, let's say, I don't know about that percentage to happen. If you actually physically write it down on paper, then if yes. you just in your mind made a mental list of like, oh, I want to do all these things this year, or oh, I want to accomplish this this year. When you actually put pen to paper, that reality is set in motion. And so the writing, can you tell us all like we all want to manifest more of X, Y, and Z in our life right now? What how how can we write it? What should we do? Or like that's a great idea with the jar. But is there other things like I'm shopping for the perfect home or i'm looking for the perfect job or etc okay so in any time you want to um set the energy for something in your life first of all you have to get clear so step one become clear so a lot of times what that entails is be being quiet emptying your brain, emptying everything out of your consciousness so that you are clear. If that means you have to go for a run and get it all out, go hike to the top of a mountain, um, lay on your floor and meditate, uh, listen to some music and have a dance off in your, uh, as you can tell, I'm a pretty physical person. Like for me, it's all physical stuff that helps me get clarity. 
Um, some people aren't like that. They're less physical. So maybe they take a shower and it rinses everything away. Maybe um, they sit and they, you know, watch a candle and they breathe. There's all different ways to become clear. So first of all, what I would say is that's step number one, clear the slate, right? Mm -hmm. And then I take one thing, be very simple, be, be gentle and simple with yourself. Take one thing and say, okay, this is what I desire. Not what you want, because if you say what you want, you're going to keep wanting it, right? Uh -huh. So that's what we don't want <laughs> what we <laughs> what we desire is for our desires to rise up to greet us right yes. to be in our lives more fully so you're going to set down your desires and you start with thoughts okay and then you say okay huh well what would that look like and then start thinking about what it would look like start asking yourself questions what would that smell like what kind of taste? Would my mouth be dry? Would I have fresh water around me? What what would that taste like? You know, um, what does it sound like? So start doing all the clairs. Mm -hmm. Claire, there's all the clairs. There's the clair of taste, the clair of sight, the clair of, of hearing, the clair of touch, the clair of just a sense around you, right? Yeah. So do that next. And this is still all like, okay, these are all floating around. And then start putting pen to paper. Okay. okay. So then you start writing it out and you can write it out in words. You can draw pictures. You can do a vision board. You can do slides on your computer if you want. I mean, personally, I think it's more when you have the physical from your brain to your hands to paper. That to me is most powerful. Mm -hmm. um, everybody works differently though. So you gotta also be kind with yourself and allow yourself to be able to move through it the way you feel most. But I'd explore, do different ways. And then after you do that, give it up and say, so it is, blessed be, know that it already is done and let it go trust that's when you go into your trust phase your 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 faith your knowing knowing that everything's okay knowing that everything's working out knowing that you are already taken care of there is enough all those things and one more thing too and we've talked about this on our other talks is always 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 set it with in the positive. So always set it in, you know, I know the perfect home is coming to me that will meet all of my needs and keep my family safe and help my business grow, right? So those are all things in the positive. Um, little story, a little long story. <laughs> I uh, had lived in a, a home in Ina Ina that was perfect for my daughter and I for the first, well, I was there for 13 years. She was there for 11. And um, the owners sold it to their own family, which was a beautiful um, transition for them. And I had 13 months to find another house. And you know, six months goes by, <laughs> a year goes by. Now we're working on, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm down to about three weeks and I still don't have my perfect home. And my clients would ask me and my friends would ask me, they're like, have you found your house yet? What, what? And I'm like, yes. They're like, oh my gosh, where is it? I'm like, well, I haven't seen it yet. It's there though. I'm just not exactly sure on the location. <laughs> And they're like, I'm really worried for you. I'm like, okay, we're going to talk about something else. I can't entertain that energy of worry. I can't entertain that because you're going to freak me out. <laughs> I had a big three-bedroom house, two dogs, a daughter, a business, everything's going to move. So um, my daughter and I had gone through a 
couple months before that and we're like well where do we want to live do we want to live in the back of the valley do we want to live on the ocean do we want a, a two bedroom a three bedroom a two story a one story do we want a fountain in the front do we want a pool do we want to be close to height do we want a balcony on each one of our rooms do we and she <laughs> drew this house and it had all these nooks and crannies and all these crazy little things, right? Yeah. And um, three, two and a half weeks before we had to move out, I walked into the home that we're in right now. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is it. <laughs> this is it. Holy moly. And I started walking around and I'm like, wait and it goes around over here wait, and then oh, oh that's good okay let me go upstairs and look and I go and I look I'm like whoa okay that's that's an interesting room and this has got like oh it's just okay and then there's this room and what's this little door and I go into this like little Harry Potter room <laughs> <laughs> that was huge and like another yeah it was energetically it was mm -hmm. the same we didn't have balconies off of our rooms and we don't have a big fountain in our front yard, but energetically, the feeling was there. Every one of our needs were taken care of. We are in the back of a valley. We have a nice breeze. Yeah. We have plenty of space. It's safe for my dogs. It's safe for my daughter. It's safe for my clients. Um, it feels good for me. We're able to um have a community within the home also because of the amount of space and the interesting way that it's all set together and um and then i took it so after we drew everything out i want to say this part also we had an actual ritual and um basically a ceremony a gratitude ceremony for the home that we were in mm and gave great gratitude for that home and blessings for it to be able because it served us so well and so i believe everything has an energy and everything is alive and that home was alive for us and it took care of us through many 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 um times of joy times of trouble times of all kinds of times and we that the home free that had gifted us all of those experiences. And after we did that, it's almost like it was lifted and we were able to find our new home. So I think that's an important oh. part of the process as well. Mm -hmm. It's just being grateful for what you have and being grateful um, for how you got there and how you're going to be able be gifted forward wow wow i should just wrap up the show right now that was amazing <laughs> <laughs> we, still have, we still have time well i remember when i first came to your place and i said wow this is like the perfect space how did you find i called you and i said how did you find that because i realized i was going to need to be moving at some point and you shared with me that story and when i was now trying to find the place that i'm in right now I was down to the wire and I have two kitties, as most of you know, because they bounce in and out of the camera. But uh, I had a hard time finding a place that would accept pets. And so I wrote down, I have that piece of paper and I remember you telling me details. I wrote down, I wanted it, you know, be demanding of what I want. I wanted it near Kalama Beach. I love to run there. It has deep, soft sand. It makes my body feel great. I need a yard outdoor space for my kitties. I need bing, 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 bing. I love to cook. I love to entertain. I have an out and I have an outdoor space. I don't have, I have an Ohana, so I don't have a full kitchen, but toaster ovens and hot plates and all that enable me to have people over and do outside cookets. And I have a grill and an outdoor place with seating. It was partially furnished. It just, everything it had, um, except for I was hoping for it was one big open space instead of a long and lean space. But like you said, I got everything I wanted. 
every, it's quiet. I don't hear dogs barking all the time because I produce a show here. Everything that I want is here. My landlord lives on site. I wanted an on-site presence. She's lovely. I got everything I wrote and more. I can walk to the beach that I want. I didn't write down <laughs> walk to the beach. I wrote down drive there in under 10 minutes. And it was amazing. So thank you for that because I had been saying it, but I remember you saying, we, we, Isabel and you wrote it all down. And I went and I got a scrap of paper and I wrote everything down that I wanted, the, the fountain, the everything, go big, you said, go big to the finest detail. And I got it. I got yeah, it. Energetically too, right? So yeah. maybe you didn't get everything that you wrote down specifically, but energetically you got the feeling that mm -hmm. you that you were desiring, right? I did. I everything did. You, your heart's desires, love. I, I, <laughs> All I, your heart's I, desires are yours. You just have to know how to communicate them. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. I do a lot of um, guided, you know, for lack of a better word, meditations and yeah. on on manifesting and on having the perfect day and on and I, I really do love those because in the morning, you know, I work very long hours on Monday from seven to like 630 or seven. And so in the morning, I've come off the weekend, I'm not used to getting up that early. I'm feeling tired, right? I'm feeling tired. I'm worried about my fatigue. And I immediately do some sort of mindfulness or um, today's going to be the perfect day meditation and I'm going to be calm and I'm going to give my heart and soul to my patients and I'm going to feel great. And honestly, within, by the time I get to work, which is about 40 minutes, I am transformed. I, how I feel from tired, concerned, how I'm going to put forth what I need to put forth on that Monday. I am transformed into, I walk in confident. I'm excited to see my first patient. I can't wait to see how they're feeling so I can help them and guide them with what they need. And that goes on from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. And that five minutes talking to myself did that to me. And I am so a proponent for everyone out there in the world to know that you have that inside of you that yes. produce that feeling. Like you said, the word feeling, produce that feeling and watch. Like you said, sit back and trust and watch it unfold. Absolutely. Sit back and just, yeah, let just be in the knowing that it already is. You know, yeah. there is enough. You are able to be happy. All of those things. Do you know, have you ever heard of Michael Dooley? I don't think so. Oh my gosh. So he has this whole thing and I haven't looked him up in a couple of years, but many years ago, like I'm going to say 20, maybe yeah. longer, um, thoughts become things. That is the name of his, um, website maybe, or he has like a daily thing and you can type it in thoughts become things. And at, some of them are a little off the wall. So maybe that's not your cup of tea or your jam, but you know what I mean? It's, it is so true. Our thoughts become things. So just Stay conscious, stay conscious about what you think, stay conscious so that what you are bringing into your field, what frequencies you are attracting are the ones that you want. They're the ones that you desire. It's what you are ready to continue creating, right? Yeah, so. that, was, that was very well said. And I'm, I'm looking at the time here and I believe that we need to wrap it up. So on that note, everyone, thank you so much, Tish, for joining us today and sharing this wonderful wisdom that I hope everybody goes out and starts as soon as they're done watching the show. And thank you to Think Tech Hawaii and everyone who allows us to produce this for you today. Aloha and life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, 
please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.